Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is bicycle that my mate John found, Norco. Um, John found it in the alleyway behind his house about six months or a year ago. It was quite badly damaged. It's missing its biggest chain ring. Um, I still have it, but it was completely buckled. So I've removed it because it's useless. It was also, also one of the discs on it was buckled as well. Um, so I've replaced that. It's a power assist e-bike conversion. It's got a sensor and ring here, a ring of magnets and a little sensor in at the crank end. It's got a, I think a Bafang, if I can see it through there, 250, I think it's just a standard 250 watt legal power assist. It had a battery on the back. The battery was down, each cell was down to less than a volt, I think of the, I don't know, 42 lithium cells or some number like that, with quite, quite a few cells in it. It had a grey box in the back and it's got a controller up on the front and it's got two um, connectors here where there should be micro switches, I think, on the brakes, but because it's got hydraulic brakes, I imagine they were never fitted. I'll just show you a little bit about it today um, and how I've, after, I don't know, a few months, I got the, got the bicycle end of it working initially and then just didn't really want it as a power assist, so I've left it in the shed. Uh, but today I took a notion that I could do something about it. I've been trying to fix the uh, Profit e-bike and that's been featured in other videos a couple of times now and I've made a long video about trying to get the circuit board going and soldering and whatnot and I didn't fix it in the, in the end, so it's a spoiler there. Um, but I thought, well, if that project's gone to rest for a while, I'll have a battery spare so I could resurrect this one, and I was got it going. Uh, it was all the parts actually were working except the battery, which is kind of cool. So I've put a little drill battery on it for now, 40 volt drill battery to power a 36 volt controller, and it works. Seems to work just fine. It, I mightn't have mounted the sensor correctly. It was held on originally with blue tack, and it had fallen off. So. I think blue tack's probably not the best way to do it, so I need to figure something out there to get it, but it needs to be right beside the ring. We'll have a close-up look at that in a minute. Um, but apart from that, it seems to work just fine. I think the use case for it for me is that if I can get a trailer mount on it, it will tow a trailer, a bicycle trailer, and that's the power assist. That'd be pretty useful. Whether or not I need a trailer with my cargo bike is neither here nor there, but I have a trailer, I have this bike, so there's a setup there ready to go. So if I turned on, the light should come on here. There you go. There's a little red light in the center of the screen. This little, where is it? I can't even see it now. This little guy here in front of my finger, a little black thing there. It's um, it's the sensor. And then over here, there's a ring attached to the crank. It just pushes on. You've got to remove the chain wheel, but the crank ring just pushes on. It's a ring of magnets mounted in plastic. It runs past the sensor and you can see that little bit of chewing gum or blue tack in there in the center. That's all there is in there. Up on the dash control it's got on off which you just press and hold and it's got mode low medium and high. I don't know what really they'll do for you but that's that's what it does. It says it's a 790 and that's the battery charge state indicator. Um, 790 maybe I should look up what that is. It's just mounted on there with uh, a little screw mount fixing. Pretty simple really. And here are the two cables that have no, well, nothing attached to them. I think there's just a wire on each side and if you put a micro switch or something across them or just, just jump them across, it stops the motor turning. Towards the rear here, this was all encased in a plastic box but it's all just hanging loose now. You've got this grey box over here, I've just held it on with a cable tie. That's the controller and maybe I can see what it says on it. It's a W uh, WZKD3615KA and they're quite expensive online, you know. Um, you can buy them, it's Hal they're on the Halfords website and they're on various internet auctions and whatnot. That's the connector that would have attached to the battery but I've just put a cable across a spade connector, a standard spade connector fits on there. I think they're 6mm. Uh, it's pretty obvious, positive and negative, hopefully. And then on the back here, I've got my battery and I'll disconnect that to show you in close. So just in case you've not seen this before, pull the cable tie a little bit tight and then just slide in something pointy like a knife or a pin or a nail or a screw tip or something like that. And you can loosen a cable tie off. I hate cable ties because I think they're just 
pre-built plastic waste. If you use them in a situation where they're going to stay forever, but if you're just using them because you're too lazy for something else, then you end up cutting them and throwing them away. It bugs me. Election posters use massive ones. What a waste of time. Rant over. Here's the battery. It's a Active Energy Aldi Affair. Uh, 20, 40 volts. 20 or 40. So it's kind of two 20 volt cells. And if we have a look here, maybe we'll see it. There's B1 negative, B2 negative, T and ID. So that's a maybe a temperature thing in the center. Don't know if it is, don't know if it works. It should do if it's Aldi. Then it's B1 plus positive and B2 positive. So you've got B2 negative, B2 positive, B1 negative, B1 positive. What I do is I've put a piece of brass, like a horseshoe here, between B2 negative and B1 positive. You just don't want to short out a single battery. So B2 to B1. If you did B1 to B1, that'd probably be bad. B2 to B1, and then put that, and that'll give you 40 volts. You can test this with a multimeter if you want. Just check with the voltage setting, which ones, which one's which. But I've put the uh, negative then to B1 negative, and the positive to B1 positive, and you're going to get 40 odd volts, maybe 41 volts out of it, or something like that. Sufficient to drive the e-bike sufficient to drive the e-bike. So let me show you in a kind of a bench test way that it works. <laughs> Here we are down at the crank. I don't know if you'll be able to see my head if I'm doing it like this, but let's see. So I try and rest the front of it over there and not touch the wheel. Uh, I think it's on. And if you if you stop, but if you back pedal just the slightest, it cuts out straight away. So it's pretty useful, I reckon. So there isn't much more to it, really. It works, and that's that. I need to give it some more prolonged testing, but I know that the little drill battery there will do a couple of kilometers at least. I've tried them out before on another e-bike project. It's made out of bits I found in a skip. They were all brand new, but in a skip. That's just the world we live in. So I could put some bits of that on here, and I'd have a throttle control, but a power, a power assist is kind of okay in its own way. It, it's... um. It's kind of what I want on the cargo bike, but I would have to get a mid-drive motor for that. And I like using my own legs from time to time, given that I've still got the use of them at my, at my tender age. So, there's not much more to show you. It just works. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be to get it going. It's been sat in the shed for ages, and I just thought it doesn't work for some reason without having tried it. I think I need to make a better mount for this fellow down here, the little sensor, because a little bit of blue tack and a wire just hanging off into space is not ideal. Uh, I'll have to figure that out. Maybe a little piece of wood carved up and just kind of fit it on and put a wrap around it or something like that. Or a bit of um, the bathroom sealant, the, the good one, the one that's expensive. Uh, might do it and just hold it in place down there and I think there needs a bit of waterproofing at the back anyway because the, the plastic has broken from like that was probably what went wrong with it um, I can't imagine you could break a chain wheel or bend a chain wheel and a front disc in one journey what I imagine happened was the sensor fell off they didn't know what to do they left it in the back garden and it got smashed up over time and then they threw it out because it was filthy rusty tires deflated you know, you couldn't ride it as it was because of the chain wheel and because of the brake disc. It was just binding constantly. So people throw out stuff all the time in the city. That's the world we live in. The most useful thing for you maybe was just using the uh, drill battery and how to kind of jumper cable and hotwire that. If you're if you're stuck, it's really handy because you can cycle for a few miles. And if you've got a few of those batteries, you can just, you know, swap them in and swap them out and stop for a rest and that kind of thing. There you go. Questions or comments, leave them below. Subscribe if you haven't already and a like would be appreciated. Thanks for watching. See you later.